So here we have a current carrying loop and it lies in a magnetic field. What happens when there is a current carrying loop in a magnetic field? And the people respond there is torque. That this loop represents what we call a magnetic dipole and you take the cross product of the magnetic dipole and you remember its direction. Would this one have a direction that is up or, or down? And, and uh, uh, you cross that vector with the magnetic field and you get the torque that's going to go on. So if you have a current in a magnetic field, you get this torque, this, which is going to cause rotation. What about if you had a magnetic field, but you did not have a current carrying loop, you just had a loop, and you caused the loop to rotate? So, so I, I put a torque in there. And symmetry might suggest that this current would arise. If current causes turning, then turning ought to cause current. And, and it turns out that it does. That, um, <clears throat> that the actual statement of this relationship is that it is the changing flux through this loop. Uh, the magnetic field will have flux through that loop. And the fact that the flux through the loop is changing is going to induce current to flow. Actually, what it does is it induces EMF. And then if there is a conductive pathway, that EMF will cause current to flow. <coughs> Let's consider magnetic flux. What is this thing, magnetic flux? Well, can you write down a statement of, of uh, electric flux? What, what do we mean by the electric flux? And, and I'm asking you to put that on your worksheet. What is the expression for the electric flux? And I want it in terms of an integral. Um, and then, by analogy, what would the expression be for, for magnetic flux? And this might help you with your answer to that. Um, but but uh, I hope what you put down, and I'm going to drag it onto the screen. So if you like to play games, you can put yours before I drag it on there. But, but I hope that you have something like this for magnetic flux. Oops. If this is the definition of magnetic flux, and it is, that's a dot product there, then what would be the units of magnetic flux? That, that uh, they are, in fact, called Weber's, and that they use two letters instead of they could just use a W and create more confusion, but this time they do a capital W and a lowercase b for Weber's. Um, what would those units be? You examine this equation. If Weber's are the units here, then what are they equivalent to in other uh, more basic units? All right. We move on to Faraday's law of induction, which is the uh, topic of this lecture today. And you learned it last year. Uh, see if you can recall it. Um, and, and if you can't, then start up the show again. And, and I'm going to drag this on in here. That it was that this induction that we're referring to in Faraday's law of induction is inducing EMF. 
and it was equal to the rate of change in the magnetic flux. We already asserted in the previous slide that it was changing flux that induced EMF. Well, the actual rate of change in the flux is equal to the amount of EMF that you get. And then there's this curious negative here. Um, if you have multiple loops, then, then um, for each of those loops, the rate of change in the flux through the loop would induce EMF. So if you had three loops, then you would get three times as much EMF. So sometimes it's written this way, but I think this is really probably the more official way to write it. But, uh, but uh, this capital N would be how many loops you have. So you have a checkpoint to try to apply Faraday's law of induction, and you'll do it. And here again, we have Faraday's law of induction. And I would like to focus for a minute on this negative. Why is there a negative there? Can you remember? We'll play the game again. Can you remember from last year whose name, whose law has to do with this negative here? And we start the show again. And it would be called Lentz's law, which you may or may not recall, but you do need to hang on to. It's important you know Lentz's law. And it says something to the effect that the induced EMF will have a direction which is opposite to the change that is inducing it. And we'll play around with that in class. There's all kinds of wonderful uh, tactile experiences that you can have with the fact that the change in flux induces an EMF, but that EMF which is induced does not then augment the change. It doesn't cause more current to flow, a, a, a stronger flux, but it, it produces a magnetic flux. The induced EMF produces a magnetic flux that opposes the change that is going on. So this negative here. Finally, um, I would direct you to your, your books. There is a, a very neat essay on how electric guitars work and how they pick up uh, the, the uh, vibration of the strings uh, that is going to be amplified. So, so uh, that is it for today's lecture.